Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about evidence as the question appeared as part of question two on the July 2018 California bar exam. And I just want to say this, that for an essay like this and pretty much across the board when you come across questions for the California bar exam, you have to use the facts. Now here, I'm going to make a prediction here. I'm going to say that a lot of examinees probably did not hone in uh, the black letter rule as it applied to the confrontation clause. And I'm going to say this, that that is okay as long as you use the facts and you somewhat capture the essence of the confrontation clause. And I, I'm going to say that when you see the exams come out, you're going to see that the answers are going to be spread all over the place. Okay, so I'm trying to say that even if you did not get the exact black letter law, that there's still a possibility that you still passed as long as you analyze the facts. And that's what we're going to focus on today, the facts that appeared on this question. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's start with question one. It says, assuming all appropriate objections were timely made, should the court have admitted the 911 tape? Discuss. Okay, so I had to think about that when I did this question. I pretty much just stared at it. Okay, because there's a lot going on here. All right, but hey, I got to focus on, on the recording as a whole, not on any particular statement, at least at the outset when I first began reading the, um, the hypothetical. Okay, but let's talk about that now. Now, what we are dealing here specifically, again, after reading it, we're dealing with, with the particular statement made by Vic. It says, Vic reported that Deb, his girlfriend, had beaten him. Okay, so that's the essence of the recording. Now, of course, for the analysis, okay, you get to, uh, you run through the through relevance, this is logical, this is legal proposition eight because this does seem like it's in criminal court. And what do you have there on the legal? You have a public policy, and there you could have included the discussion of the confrontation clause. All right, so what stuck out to me was this when I was reading. It's probably occurred to you too. Okay, so we have statements that are testimonial in nature. All right. And that's going to be key here for this particular analysis. So let's go ahead and look at the black letter law. It says the conversation clause bars admission of testimonial statements. Okay, unless the witness was unavailable to testify and that the defendant had a prior opportunity to cross-examine. So, like I said earlier, even if you did not get the particular, that particular black letter law, but something close, and you analyze the facts, you are going to get points. Okay, so this reminded me very much of Davis versus Washington, and I'm sure everyone here or most of you guys ran across that case in law school. All right, but here are the facts that you can use, that you should have used, and I'm not saying you should have used all of them, but if you at least touched on them, I think you did okay. So what do we have here? We have battery of a spouse. And of course, that seems like it belongs in criminal court. We have that 911 call. Okay, and what you want to think there is, okay, was the person making the call, were they seeking immediate help from the police? Or were they in some kind of police station hours after and they were making statements? Okay. And also, Vic did identify the perpetrator. That's another fact. And of course, the declarant, Vic, is unavailable to testify against defendant Deb. Okay. So uh, we have all these facts here. So we're going to somehow make use of them. But the most important one here for this discussion was that two minute lapse in which the beating took place and when the phone call was placed, see that that's those two minutes right there is what you have to focus on. And I'm going to we're going to run through this right now. OK, so here the issue is this. Did Vic make a testimonial statement? OK, 
So if you answered yes, then Vic did, and then that implicates the confrontation clause under the Sixth Amendment. And who would prefer this? Deb would prefer this, not the prosecutor. Okay. So if you said, hey, look, the 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 statement made by Vic was not testimonial, and then that pretty much ends the discussion of the confrontation clause. Okay, and of course the prosecution will love that. But still you want to run through the analysis, right? So we have here two primary issues. Number one, was the statement testimonial in nature? And two, if it was testimonial, can the confrontation clause be, be cured? So let's run through that now. So the first question is this, what is a testimonial statement? So for it to be, let's talk about first non-testimonial and then we'll talk about testimonial statements. So if it's non-testimonial, this is going back to uh, Davis versus Washington, is if the purpose of the statement is made to enable the, the police to meet an ongoing emergency, okay? So think about it. Here we have a person that was just beat, that was just beaten. So was it safe for Vic considering the circumstances? Then of course you could argue either way. Okay, now if you want to say it was testimonial, okay, and then for that, you have to say, hey, look, the circumstances indicate that there was no ongoing emergency, okay? And that the primary purpose was to establish facts that already took place. Now here, of course, you had two minutes that lapsed. So here you could have gone either way. Like I said, I'm not here to say, look, you should have done, you should have answered this way or that way. I'm just presenting you facts that you could have used. And either way, you decide and then you make a conclusion, but you still want to discuss hearsay. Okay. Now, by the way, if you said that it was testimonial, okay, now can you find a cure for the confrontation clause? So what do we need there? We need two elements. Number one, was the witness unavailable? And did the defendant have a prior opportunity to cross-examine the witness? So I'll just leave that there. By the way, this question was, uh, let's see, a confrontation clause issue did appear in February of 2017. And one of the model responses there said, hey, look, they didn't even mention a prior opportunity. They just said, was there an opportunity to cross-examine? That's why I said, hey, look, if you even came close to discussing the black letter law, I think you did well. But again, the important thing here is to focus on those facts. Okay, so you reach a conclusion and then you run through hearsay statements. Okay, and what do we have here? We have business record and they stipulated that it will not cover a certain part. Okay, that's fine. So go on and see if you can find other hearsay exceptions. And what do we have there in California? Of course, we don't have excited utterance. We have spontaneous statements. And you could have used the contemporaneous statements because there is case law that suggests that it, that can occur immediately after an event takes place, not just during the time. Okay, so let's move now to question number two. It says, assuming all appropriate objections were timely made, should the court have admitted Sam's testimony? Discuss. Okay, so here we actually have two statements. It says that Sam testified that Deb had threatened to choke him to death if he left her, and the second statement that she had beaten him several times during the time they lived together. Okay, so. Of course, there, I don't want to make any conclusions about that, right? Because there's due process, right? So we're going to not make any any conclusions here. We're going to allow due process to take shape. Okay, but anyway, let's go, let's get back to this. So of course, you run through relevance, legal and logical. Okay, and then what do you get? And then after that, you get to character evidence. All right, so let's talk about character evidence in there. You have two potential issues. You have mimic, 
uh, the common scheme, and then you also have domestic violence that you can use to introduce those statements. Okay, let's talk about common scheme. Okay, of course, we're talking about the California version here, and that's pretty broad in scope. Okay, so you can say, hey, look, you want to show some kind of consistency from inappropriate threats and hitting that occurred eight years ago to continued battering of the living boyfriend. You can say that. And of course, you could also say, hey, look, there is domestic violence taking place here. Do we have domestic violence? Well, are they married? The answer is no. But do they have to be married? No, they could be cohabitants. Okay. And if they are, according to the statute, if they're having sex, that's enough to classify it as domestic violence. And then through that exception, you could bring in past actions. Okay, of the defendant and introduced them. So here, of course, we had Sam, who was a living boyfriend about eight years ago, and they were living together. So boyfriend, girlfriend living together, the probability of them engaging in sexual relations is very high. So I think you could probably use domestic violence. And again, using the facts, okay, even if you don't know what the statute of limitations is, you can just say, hey, look, if it meets the, the statutory time frame, then it's going to be admitted. And here, what do the facts say about the, the current? It says something about, okay, live to get living boyfriend eight years earlier. So you just say, okay, it will be admissible if it meets the statutory time frame. Okay, which in California, I believe it's, it's five years. Okay, so let's go on to the third question. It says, assuming all appropriate objections were timely made, should the court have admitted the computer printout? And they give you all these facts there. Of course, you do want to use the facts again. Okay, so you run through relevance, you run through presentation, you run through personal knowledge, authentication. You could, because that's heavy, right? That last paragraph there is heavy on that. And then you get to a hearsay statement. Was that a hearsay statement? Statement. Now, many of you guys said that it was, and some of you guys said that it was not a hearsay statement. Actually, uh, a person sent me a message over this, and they said, hey, look, I said that it was not a hearsay statement because, because a printout cannot be a hearsay statement under California law. So, uh, and also I did write about this on, in the Facebook group, okay, but in California... Machines cannot make statements. Only people can make statements. But again, like I said, if you got a good discussion there based on the facts, it's probable that you will get points because, again, they're asking you to discuss facts according to the instructions, not merely conclusions. But I hope that those of you that said, hey, look, it's not a hearsay statement, I hope you guys got extra points. And I hope that was true of other areas here. I think there was a lot of opportunity to get extra points. So I wish everyone all the best. I hope you guys passed. Until soon.